All right, a little update on the millennial reign. Okay, so this to me is is absolutely insane. It's crazy. It's bizarre. And at the same time, it's very interesting because there is nothing in the Bible at all that speaks of this idea of a millennial reign. It's not in Revelation 20. I've shown that over and over and over and over and over and over. It says very clearly in verse 4, And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Makes no mention at all of Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years. Makes no mention of all, at all that the saints are reigning a thousand years. Again, in verse 6, But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Again, no mention at all of Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years. No mention at all of us, the saints, reigning a thousand years. Nobody is reigning a thousand years in Revelation 20. And of course, you're not going to find it anywhere in the Bible, period. You're not, it's not here in Revelation 20. It's not anywhere. We, the saints, those of us that are saved, those of us that are born of the Spirit of God, we live and reign with Christ right now. We live and reign with Christ during this time right now. And this time is a unique time period from the time of baby Jesus to the time of his return. He has died, resurrected, and ascended to heaven and promised to return for us. This is a very unique and special time period that we're living in right now. This is not a thousand year reign of Christ. It's not a thousand year reign of the saints. There's no mention at all of anybody reigning for a thousand years. In fact, we go to Luke chapter 1 verse 33. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. He reigns forever. Jesus Christ reigns forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever there's no end to his kingdom. No end whatsoever. He reigns forever. Not a thousand years. The idea is ludicrous. There's one way to put it. It's stupid. That's another way to put it. Jesus Christ does not reign for a thousand years. And the Bible's very clear on that. Very, very clear. All right? We are living and reigning with Christ right now. Let's say you're saved. Are you saved? How can you be saved and not be reigning with Christ right now? He says that he abides in us and we in him. Those of us that are saved, right? So we have Jesus Christ living in us and we are in him and we shall never die. It even says, and the second death has no power. Blessed is he that has part in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power. Jesus Christ is that resurrection and he has ascended to heaven and promised to return for us. And when he comes in the clouds of heaven in a moment we shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye. We shall be changed. First the dead in Christ shall rise, and then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. <laughs> we Right now we are priests of God and of Christ. I mean, that's, isn't that what the Bible says? And to deny that is to deny the Bible. Now we can go to Revelation 1, and then we can go also to Second Peter. Oh no, I forgot what verse that was. Uh-oh. We are a royal priesthood. 
First Peter. What did I say? Second Peter. First Peter two. Can't remember nothing. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of Him who has called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. We're a special people. We are the people of God. Right? There shouldn't be any lack of confidence in the that very fact. We are the people of God, which in time past were not a people, but now are now the people of God. We are a royal priesthood and holy nation, which had not obtained uh, excuse me, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. The Bible's very clear. We are the blessed of God. We are the people of God. We are the elect. We are the chosen. We are the saved. We are the nation of God. We are priests of God and of Christ. And let's go to Revelation 1. And Jesus Christ has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Right now, we that are saved, we that are born of God, are priests of God. Okay? So if you're not a priest of God right now, I mean, we're called to preach the gospel to every creature. We are a royal priesthood. If you're not a priest of God right now, then how can you rightly say that you're saved? Right? And of course, when the thousand years are expired, that is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. We get a parallel here in verse 11. From whose face the earth and heaven fled away. This is when the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars of heaven shall fall. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And the great white throne is the sign of Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven. And he will send his angels to gather together his elect from one end of heaven to the other, right? And we shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye. First the dead in Christ shall rise, and then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. When this occurs, that is when we are, we're up in the air, our enemy is gathered at our feet, okay, and then... That's what happens at the end of the thousand years. Satan is loose to gather them together. To gather the unsaved people. Alright. I've heard so many people talk so, so much nonsense. They'll say, hey, this is gathering saved people. Satan is going to go out and deceive saved people. I mean, it's just ridiculous, right? No, this is going to gather unsaved people. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up. Our enemy is gathered at our feet. And this also parallels, uh, if I could remember anything. Let me see if I can find it. Right there. This parallels uh, 1330. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers... Gather ye together first the tares, that's the unsaved, that's when Satan is loosed, and he deceives the nations to gather them together at our feet. They are gathered at our feet, and they will be made to know that God has loved us, we that are born of God, we that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. We're up in the air. Our enemy is gathered at our feet and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all. 
right? And the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. They're going to be at our feet. This is when we're up in the air. We are changed in the twinkling of an eye. And our enemy is gathered at our feet. And I will make them to know that I have loved thee. I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. And Genesis 3 verse 15. I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is when the Lord is up in the air and he stomps his foot on the head of the serpent and destroys all wickedness forever and ever. All right, this is when death is swallowed up in victory. Right, First Corinthians, <clears throat> excuse me, First Corinthians 15. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, when we are changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, first the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory all right and then of course the to go back to genesis 3 15 that's when jesus stomps out death and sin forever forever this is prophecy that goes all the way back to the beginning this is a mystery that's been uh, concealed in the bible forever all right and it's very simple it is so simple and men do all they can to confuse it don't they I mean it's just non-stop relentless you got three videos to one three videos saying millennial reign of Christ even though it's not in the Bible the reign of Christ even though uh, well okay so the reign of Christ would be forever that would be all right except that's not what he's talking about he's talking about a millennial kingdom which is not in the bible not in revelation 20 not anywhere it's like these guys are preaching a different religion it really is and then again there's no millennial reign of anything anywhere at all all right and i, I just wonder how can these guys pretend to be knowledgeable in the scripture and yet they get this very simple thing wrong. It's astonishing. Well, I know why it's happening. It's because they're not trusting the Bible that they hold in their hands. They're looking at other teachers to teach them about the Bible. Rather than trusting God to learn what the Bible teaches, the Bible is the Word of God. All right, rather than trusting God, they're trusting other men to teach them what God says. That's how this happens. There's no other explanation for it because it's not in the Bible anywhere. It's not in Revelation 20. It's not anywhere at all. And this is evidence that they're getting their teaching from men and not from God. Anybody with eyes to see take a look at Revelation 20 and see very plainly very simply very easily there is no millennial reign of anybody no millennial reign of Jesus Christ no millennial reign of believers no millennial reign of Bugs Bunny it's not there it's not anywhere okay so I'm going to implore you all to trust the Bible you hold in your hands and believe that it is from God. 
because it is.